Reviewing once again the events that took place immediately following the Declaration of Independence. And at the head of the army. Second, second. Second. The motion is unanimously carried. We must all hang together. In 1776, we now find that the Continental Army had suffered serious defeats at the Battle of Long Island, the Battle of Harlem Heights, the Battle of Valcour Bay, the Battle of White Plains, and the capture of Fort Washington and Fort Lee. This forced the Continental Army to retreat south into Pennsylvania. That brings us to the very last weeks of 1776, when George Washington and his Continental Army were poised on the west bank of the Delaware River. Essentially, uh, on the 26th of December in, in 1776, we managed to cross the Delaware River, which is quite treacherous at this time of the year because of rapids much farther up the river creates ice flows, and that made it rather difficult. And of course, we had to reach the Hessian positions uh, without their knowing it. It all required quite a bit of faith, and, and as Providence would have it, uh, we were successful. We could barely feed our own army, let alone uh, collect prisoners along the way. And of course, uh, not long after taking Trenton, about 10 days later, I struck at Princeton, and that was uh, quite successful as well. Princeton was a wealthy and established community even at the time of the War for Independence. Many historic buildings still exist there today. Today we're at the Thomas Clark House at the Princeton Battlefield. The house was used as a hospital shortly after the battle. A nice old house. General Hugh Mercer died from bayonet wounds here. Very valuable uh, officer it was General Mercer. Did we mention there is a wonderful bicycle trail from Trenton to Princeton and on up to Brunswick? Did we mention this is the same route taken by British forces on their retreat to New York? and by General Washington on his way to Morristown for the winter of 77. That's okay, because we will be returning to this trail later. For now, we are going to hear from the arch rival of General Washington. I am Charles, second Earl, and sixth Baron Cornwallis in the peerage of Great Britain. Constable of the Tower of London and Lieutenant General of His Majesty's Armies here in the American provinces. We proceeded to drive Washington and his rabble across the Jerseys, and then, with the onset of winter, all gentlemen retire and take their ease. And I obtained leave of absence to return to England to spend time with my wife, the Countess. As I was putting my baggage on board the good ship Bristol, bound for England, we received news of Mr. Washington's very ungentlemanly Christmas present at Trenton. I was ordered immediately to Princeton to retrieve the situation. I pushed on to Trenton and had Mr. Washington, as I imagine, trapped between the Assumpink Creek and the River Delaware. But night was drawing on, and he did not fancy a night action. I said to my staff, gentlemen, this fox is bad. We'll go across and take him in the morning. During the night, however, 
Mr. Washington, again being extremely ungentlemanly, slunk away, leaving watchfires burning, snuck round behind my position and attacked my reserves at Princeton, winning a second victory in two weeks. With winter weather becoming a factor, the British returned to the area around New York, while General Washington and his army spent the winter of 77 near Morristown. See the little tiny one? As we have previously mentioned, there are many wonderful cycling trails all along the way. To gain a better understanding of this long road to Yorktown, perhaps we should look at the British strategy of 1777. Deer over there on the left. Washington's headquarters in Morristown, New Jersey. Before we go into the British strategy, we should mention another rebel victory of July 77 at Fort Ticonderoga. This, however, was short-lived. General Howe certainly did not expect to meet with much resistance and thought that by this point he would have already captured Philadelphia. General Burgoyne was coming from the north with a plan approved by the King of England. He would send one force around to attack from the west while yet another force would come up the Hudson River from the south, converging on Albany. If this succeeded, they would cut the colonies apart. This is Fort Stanwix. A museum which is located directly behind us. It's behind this building right here. It's about the siege of 1777. Fort Stanwix was the place where the British attack from the west was stopped. This gentleman looks a lot like Peter Gansevoort, the colonial commander at Fort Stanwix. A colonel in the 2nd New York Regiment. Here we are at the Oriskany Battlefield, one of the bloodiest battles of the American Revolution. There was also fighting in other parts of upstate New York. As General Burgoyne headed south, he successfully recaptured Fort Ticonderoga, but then his Hessians were beaten at Bennington and he was ultimately forced to surrender at Saratoga in October of 1777. We're not going to mention any mountain bike trails because at the same time these events were taking place to the north, General Howe had repositioned his troops to the south of Philadelphia. It was at this time that Marquis de Lafayette arrived from France. We had a very major engagement with the British at Brandywine on the 11th of September, 1777. That was almost a victory, but I learned uh, a number of lessons at Brandywine, and one of them was not to commit myself with the full engagement 
unless I was confident of victory. That was a major lesson to learn at Brandywine. We nearly won, but we did leave the field uh, late that evening, and, and any army that leaves the field is technically has lost the battle. However, in Europe, it was seen as a colonial victory.